Hello everyone, I'm John Bacala with the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department and you're tuned in to the Weekly Report. You know, trash and recycling services are always one of the top search web pages on the KCMO.gov website. So today I'm going to give you an update on some of the news regarding trash and recycling. Northland residents will be excited that a temporary recycling center will soon be opened at Pleasant Valley Park. The old site at Metro North Mall closed recently as part of the mall's redevelopment. Like the other sites, glass, paper, aluminum, and plastics will be accepted. Be sure to go to kcmo.gov for a complete list of accepted materials and other site information. Winter weather has created more work for city crews this year. Staff continues to pick up the limbs that were damaged from snowstorms. More than 9,000 residents made pickup appointments. All of those limbs and branches are going to our site on 40 Highway, where it will be turned into mulch and compost. If you'd like to purchase any of those products to help with your spring yard projects, be sure to check out our website for operating hours and costs. Is spring cleaning on your to-do list? If you have items you'd like to dispose of, the city's bulky item pickup will resume in April. However, we'll begin taking appointments again in March. Bulky item pickup was halted to allow our city crews to pick up limbs damaged from this winter's storms. Registered neighborhood groups who'd like to hold a neighborhood cleanup can do so by getting a dumpster from the city. Fill out the form which is available on the city's website, kcmo.gov. Registered neighborhood groups are also eligible for our trash bag program. Go to kcmo.gov and learn how you can pick up trash bags to help keep your neighborhood clean. Tom, tornado warning, let's go. Get all your personal belongings and come out to the stairwell. Speaking of spring weather, it is time for the annual city tornado drill. Each year, the city safety team coordinates the drill to ensure employees and any residents inside City Hall would be safe in the case of a real tornado. Gary, you're out. Everybody out. Into the stairwell, bring your personal belongings. May I have your attention? May I have your attention? We have severe weather moving toward downtown Kansas City. Please take your personal belongings, cell phone purse, and medications. Calmly move to the east and west stairway on your floor. This year's drill will take place March 8th. So if you happen to be in City Hall that day, you could participate in our drill as well. Okay, it's all clear. Everybody go back to your desks, please. Thank you very much. The City Council voted to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by renaming the Paseo after him during ceremonies earlier this week. It is a brisk morning, but it is a historic morning. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. O oh Lord our God, we who are in your great universe, we are here trusting you. No one who trusts in you will ever be defeated. Lord, for you are good. Your faithful love endureth forever. This community, our community, deserves beautification, economic investment, landmarks, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard so that the children who walk out of Lee A. Talbot Academy can look up on the corner and see a man that fought and bled for their right for equality in America. This is big, y'all. You ought to give God some praise for it. And therefore, it's certainly an honor for me today to be able to stand here as we are able to count down the inaugural sign installation that is going to be hung here on this boulevard. We're going to lead us at least a countdown or so and then as, as we do that, I also will call up uh, Archie, who is going to, Archie, you're going to give Dr. King's speech. I've been to the mountaintop as the city crews are actually installing the sign. Well, I don't know what's going to happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. 
But I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Thanks for watching the Weekly Report. I'm John Bacala with Neighborhoods and Housing Services. And now here's some really great videos from other city departments. Miles of creeks, streams, and rivers wind through Kansas City, and they all eventually lead to the Missouri River. Because Kansas City gets its drinking water from the Missouri River, the health of these smaller creeks and streams is important to Casey Water, and that's where this team comes in. Streams are like sink for whoever does not behave right by the stream. Several times a year, Jing Tao and Michael Radabaugh wade into local waters with containers and tools to measure water quality. They're checking for E. coli, solids, metals, and other contaminants. This equipment we have is to measure the flow in the stream. Uh, for these Kansas City, uh, Missouri streams, most of them are weatherable, which means they are shallow enough you can walk across. Samples go to Casey Waters Laboratory, and the results are sent to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Casey Water is required to do this to protect water quality across the city. Since Radabaugh started water testing in 2014, he's seen one problem get worse, litter. There's more litter and more uh, solids in the water than there was in 2014 because people throw out their cigarette butts, their shredded paper, it, it gets, the plastic bags get shredded. Everyone plays a role in protecting water quality. So please, don't litter, bag up all yard waste, and avoid applying too much lawn fertilizer because whatever you do overdo on your yard, they end up in the stream. It isn't just humans who benefit from cleaner creeks, streams, and rivers. Litter bags that you throw out there with all your McDonald's and stuff pollutes the water that the deer, the raccoons, the possums, and the other things that have to drink out of this water are getting all that stuff leached into their water. So if you don't want it in your water, why would they want it in their water? For Casey Water, I'm Brooke Givens. Are you looking for information on trash collection, how to file a police report, or how to get a business license? The information you're looking for is as easy as getting on the city's website and filling in the blanks. Simply enter what you are searching for in the search bar. The search results will pop up. There's no need to click on any buttons or scroll down through the drop-down menu. You can also receive lots of city information directly to your email. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the newsletters link. You can also go to kcmo.gov slash subscribe. The city regularly emails news releases, newsletters, information from council members, and much more. Just sign up with your email address and select the information you would like to receive. To watch additional videos on city services and programs, check the FYIKC website at kcmo.gov slash FYIKC or visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash kcmocco. We've been getting a lot of questions about potholes from the media and from our residents. That's why we invited reporters out to explain how we feel potholes and what it takes to get those holes fixed. Uh, if you look at last year in the first six months of 2018, last winter at this time, we had 256 potholes that were reported to our 311 center. This year, 1,400. And that's just the ones that have been reported. So that is five times as many potholes reported this year for the first six weeks of the year. Are city crews overwhelmed by the numbers? Well, I'll tell you what, it is a challenge. And, and I want to point out that we have, on a good day like today, this is a week where we can really get caught up because the uh, weather is cooperating, right? Um, we have eight to 10 crews out around the city right now. We've assembled a few here to be able to show you how we actually do this. 
but all over the city right now we have uh, multiple crews working so uh, we're trying to get caught up and of that 1400 uh, 802 have been repaired already that still leaves 600 to go and I also want to point out like on this block alone you might know that we got one or two calls to 311 right but just look at the street that counts as 50 or 60 potholes just in this one block alone where they're all lined up down the center line there so there are more potholes than are actually reported we know that but we want people to call 311 because that's how we know where the potholes are so we can get out there and we can fix them. Is there any thought of devoting more resources to the problem? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one staff study showed that if we had $45 million a year to go to road repairs, that would be where we'd need to be as a city. Right now, the budget has about $10 million. Uh, the budget request that's going to be revealed tomorrow takes, would take that up to $16 million. We, I have a job for you all. We have 30 openings in Public Works right now for maintenance workers and equipment operators, and we'd love to put you to work fixing potholes. Um, it's a good job, good benefits, decent pay. Uh, the city also has a pension plan still. A lot of folks don't know that, but uh, we are a good place to work, and we'd love to hire you. And that's 30 jobs just in Public Works. There are similar openings in aviation and in parks and in neighborhood services as well. So that's part of the problem, is a shortage yeah. of manpower. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we could put more people to work, and we're ready to do that. Um, but it, it is what it is. I mean, you look around uh, at the economy right now, we have a booming economy that's good for Kansas City, but it also means there's a lot of competition for jobs. We now have something called thump pads. Interesting name, what does it do? This is something so that when our supervisors and inspectors are driving around the city a lot, and they see a huge crater of a pothole, they can grab a thump pad out of their truck, throw it in the hole, creates a much better ride for you as a, as a driver so you're not falling in that hole, and then they can call in the repair and get a crew out there more quickly. So we've got some of those here we can show you today. The procedure, when we, we do on a pothole, we come to the pothole, we make sure no debris, no ice or water is in it. Then we use, after we clean it off, then we use a, a adhesive called TAC. And TAC bond the new asphalt to the street and to the old asphalt. So we tack them up real good. Then we either put hot mix or cold mix. We've been using cold mix because it's better, got more emulsion in it, more oils in it for the winter time because it's wet. So, and then that, that worked better. Then we put it in, we spread it out. Then we vibrate it to compact it in so it can stay more. So that's the procedure and we just do it and make sure everything right. Because I drive these streets and I don't want my tires busted. So I make sure that they are right. <laughs> these guys are working every single day and they don't do just potholes. These are guys who go out and they are plowing the streets. They're helping with the branch pickup. So it's been a tough winter for them as well. I mean, they have been essentially going back and forth between plowing streets and patching potholes. Back and forth, back and forth. Uh, a lot of 12 hour shifts, a lot of weekend work. Uh, they worked even on the Super Bowl. That day we were nice to them and cut the shift back from 12 hours to eight hours. So uh, again, it's a tough job. We appreciate the work they're doing out here. And I think uh, a big tip of the hat to these guys who are out here every single day trying to do this. What would you do if you witness someone collapse due to a sudden cardiac arrest and they are non-responsive? We all know to call 911, but did you know that there is a new hands-only CPR protocol that doesn't require mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? Check to see if they're responsive by asking if they're okay. Are you okay? If they're unresponsive, immediately call 911. Remember, hands-only CPR is not meant to replace any emergency medical services. With an ambulance on the way, position them on their back on a hard, flat surface. Check for pulse and breath sounds. If no breath sounds or pulse are detected, immediately begin chest compressions. Remember, no mouth to mouth. Place your hands together and interlock your fingers. Press the heel of your hand into the center of the chest. Press down firmly about two and a half inches depth into the chest. Firm, fast, quality chest compressions at 100 to 120 beats a minute is ideal. Continue quality chest compressions until the ambulance arrives. Remember, hands-only CPR works by doubling the person's chance of surviving. 
For more information, contact us at 816-513-4622.